classrooms, as well as a few videos of my kids actually uh, presenting what they had discovered through the lab that I when they were started. My name is Selena Clayton, and I teach um, the STEM lab at Porter Elementary. I work with kindergarten through sixth grade. Um, and last year, our school purchased these Lego We Do kits, and we began implementing them into our STEM lab and fell in love with the learning that was taking place with the use of Legos. The only trouble with these kids is that they weren't really suited for our younger kids. They had tiny little pieces, easily lost and dropped. You had to program them through your computers. Great for older kids, but we needed something that was more suited for our younger kids, which I applied for the Lego Duplos Early Simple Machine Kits. Um, larger pieces for those little fingers, dropped, easy found. They're still creating robots and structures. The Early Simple Machine set provides eight mechanical models with full color building instructions. Um, they can still discover through like gears, levers, pulleys, wheels, and axles. Um, investigate force, buoyancy, and balance, and soft problems through design. They're constantly collaborating and building, um, and that's the idea of the Legos. And once they construct it, not only are they building it, but they are sharing what they find to investigate and research through it. This is my rubric, which turned out blank. <laughs> but basically, um, a one design is not complete. It's not able to achieve the challenge. The structure's kind of falling apart, kind of fragile. Students can get a two if the design is standard with no surprises or innovation. It holds together under normal circumstances, but it's kind of inefficient. A three, and most of my students are able to attain this level, um, even in kindergarten and first grade. Some unique features that make the design better than average. It achieves the challenge almost all of the time, and the structure is strong and efficient. A four, the design is surprisingly unique, making it superior to others, and the structure is both solid and elegant. In kindergarten and first grade, you don't get a whole lot of the fours. In my older grade, we, we strive for that, in which they do something different to the structure or add to it to make it move differently. Um, in kindergarten, they kind of add to it like we make an ice hockey man, and they're adding to it as like adding a goal and a goalie, and they don't really change the function of what he does. Um, but they still, I mean, it's still creative, and for first grade, it's, you know, it's really good. <clears throat> um, other than the rubric, some other success indicators of this can also be the k Prep and Stanford team, because essentially we're creating problem solvers. Um, each lesson design, it's okay. Each lesson design uh, is designed with the four C's in mind, connect, construct, contemplate, and continue. And I kind of gave you a, a lesson outline. I handed it out to you, and it just kind of goes through a lesson. A connect being that it provides a short story for the students uh, and gives them an opportunity to identify the problem and investigate how best to resolve it. For instance, in the outline that I gave you, um, the students build a raft, and it kind of gives a story to the students that they're pirates and they're going to hide a treasure, and they need you to help build a raft that will make itself faster. And kids really buy into it, especially kindergarten and first grade, because they want to help those, those people. Um, construct, at this level, they use the building instructions, children build models, embodying the concepts. At this level, we're hoping that kids are actually building it without the help of the teacher. I walk around, I make sure they're on track, they're helping each other construct it by following the step-by-step -step instructions, but hopefully they, don't, they need very little help. They figure out how to, how to solve it together. Um, tips are provided for testing and making sure each model functions as intended, and students can modify or add to the functions to make the robot more unique. The contemplate, this kind of involves the students carrying out scientific investigations, and this is the part that I love most about the Legos, because not only do they construct it, but they also investigate what it does. So, um, for instance, they built a car launcher, and that would be more in my video if you missed. you missed. But like they had to predict which car launcher they thought would uh, push the car the farthest. They had to explain why, and even the launcher had a longer piece and a shorter piece. The raft, they can create their own design, um, and that kind of goes with continuing it. It's because ideas are provided for further investigations. The children will experiment, design additions or changes to it. Um, and it shows some pictures of the different types of investigations. The one I gave you, the raft, they can actually change the design of the cell. And we set up a tub of water and a fan, and we test it out which raft moved quicker or sells faster. 
Some had triangles, some had um, like a rectangle. And we discussed why one would be faster than the other because it caught more wind. Like in the spinning top, students kind of investigate which way does the top spin the best, with the weight at the top or with the weight at the bottom. Um, and the pinwheel, um, these are all different robots that you can make out of this one kit. They also discussed how can I make that pinwheel differently to make it spin faster. The dog, they can adjust the rubber bands to make its eyes spin differently and it's all connected by gears. Um, and you turn a wheel and the eyes move either the same or opposite. Um, how much time for each lesson? Each lesson for me is carried out within 30 minutes because I teach in a STEM lab and I see each kid for 30 minutes. Um, but a double lesson is ideal for more in-depth investigation. Um, and I try, like depending on how good the robot is or how much you can investigate with it, we'll come back and revisit it the very next class. Um, and students really like that because it gives them the opportunity to add to it or change things. Cooperative learning um, is my favorite part of the Legos because at first you get kids coming in and they can build, but they don't know how to communicate with others. And they can build it by themselves. Some can, those that have worked with Legos at home a lot. But they can't really share their ideas or how to do it. And the communicating is, is a big key. And basically, on reflection, we absolutely love the Legos. Um, they're, the Lego robotics is engaging and hands-on. It aligns with the Common Core State Standards. Um, they teach students how to use di digital age skills in the real world. It gives them the opportunity to learn creativity, innovation, several things that are all there. I'm not going to read through all of that, but I mean, they're just absolutely great tool for students to build. And the only problem that I had with this grant is I, I applied for four Lego Duplo, Duplo kits, not anymore. <laughs> because with a large classroom, I would end up putting um, half of my kids on like computers and they're still doing the engineering.com and engineering different um, structuring activities and then I have half the kids start building with the Legos. Um, and you, it would be idea to have more, I guess, because you put them all on the same activity. But all in all, I love it.